everybody and a really warm welcome to our online service from St. Stephen's today. Great that you're tuning in to join with us. Now today's service is focusing on our calling at St. Stephen's to be a resource church. We are one of a number of resource churches in the Diocese of London and in our service today we're going to be thinking about some of the opportunities that we've got coming up to express our resource church calling. And if you're wondering what it means to be a resource church, well, really it's about generosity. We believe in a God who is generous to us. And so where we've been blessed with people, and talents and gifts and finances, they're not for us to keep hold of tightly, but they're to give away back to God and to the furthering of his kingdom and the building up of his wider church. And the New Testament speaks about how God loves to bless and to provide where we express that kind of generosity. It's only a generosity back to God that really is an overflow of his generosity to us. So a little bit later in our service, our curate, Dave Cocaine, is going to be speaking about an opportunity for us to step up again at St. Stephen's into that resource church calling. Before we get to that, we're going to worship together. And before that, I'd love to pray. So let's pray and then we'll sing together. Heavenly Father, thank you for all of your generosity towards us. Thank you for the generosity that we see supremely expressed in the coming of Jesus and the giving of himself for us. As we worship you now, stir our hearts again to practice the generosity that you call us to in the light of your generosity towards us us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So let's enjoy this worship song together led by Harry and the music team. There is a truth older than the ages. There is a promise, things are yet to come. There is one born for our salvation. Is Jesus. There is a light that overwhelms the darkness. There is a kingdom that forever reigns. There is a freedom from the chains that bind us. He is Jesus. Oh, Jesus. on the waters, who speaks to the sea, who stands in the fire beside me. He rose like a lion, he bled as the lamb, he carries my healing in his hand. times of trouble. There is a song that comforts in the night. There is a voice that comes to storm the rages. He is Jesus, oh Jesus, who walks on the waters, who speaks to the My Savior, there is power in your name. You're my rock and my redeemer. There is power in your name. You're Messiah, my Savior. There is power in your name. You're 
my rock, my redeemer. There is power in your name, in your name. Oh, you walk on the waters, you speak to the sea, you stand in the fire beside me. Thank you, Jesus, for all the ways in which you so generously pour out your love upon us. Well, as I mentioned at the start of the service today, we're focusing on our calling to be a resource church here at St. Stephen's. And if you've been around at St. Stephen's or connected with us over any length of time, you may well have heard me say on previous occasions, a little mantra that goes like this. The health of a church is measured not by its seating capacity, in other words, its size, but by its sending capacity. Week by week, we send out our congregation into all the different places in which they live their lives for Jesus. And today we're focusing on some particular opportunities that we've got coming up in a few months time in the summer to send out people to new ventures in their service of God and their leadership in the church. So first of all, it's a real delight to be able to announce today that two of our four ordinands at St. Stephen's, that's Mike English and Yvette Dixon, are going to be starting as curates in two different churches, not very far from here. So Mike English uh, in July will be starting as a curate at All Souls Church in St. Margaret's. That's a church that we at St. Stephen's helped to re-establish many years ago. And Yvette Dixon is going to be starting as a curate at St. Richard's in Hanworth, that's also in July. So congratulations to Mike and to Yvette. We will miss you when the time comes to send you out. But Resource Church Sunday is about giving away of our best. And we're thrilled to be blessing the wider church uh, as you go to serve in those two parishes. And now Dave Cocaine, who is and has been our curate here at St. Stephen's for a few years, is going to be speaking to us and speaking about an exciting opportunity that he has got coming up. Uh, this summer in a few months' time as well. So Dave, without any further ado, over to you. Our reading today is taken from Romans chapter 15, verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. What is hope? What is hope and what does it look like? Come with me. It's in the early hour. An early hour that many would describe as the night. But a certain two children would call morning. It's Christmas morning. And I hear the faint pitter-patter of small feet getting ever closer as they creep up to my bedside. They lean in and whisper in, not such a subtle way and say, Daddy, can we go downstairs? Well, first of all, I think you're up already, but I'll let that one slide and give the classic parent answer of not quite yet. As you can imagine, this doesn't quite satisfy. So they retreat and come back once more, asking again with even more nervous excitement, can we go downstairs? I relent and say yes. And they'll bolt downstairs, sling the lights on, and joy will abound. 
That. What was happening in our room? That is hope. I recently heard one of my favourite definitions of hope given by Bill Johnson, a pastor in America. He described it as the joyful anticipation of good. Hope, living in the now with its questions and tensions, but pointing to the eternal victory of God and pulling it into the present. We can therefore live in hope with the joyful anticipation of good. The Apostle Paul encourages the church in Rome, may the God of hope do what? Shout things from a distance? Hide in the shadows just out of reach? No. Fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him. Why? To what end? So that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. A Christian hope then is not one that grasps at the wind, that maybe something might turn up, but is instead rooted in the eternal victory of God and pulls it into the present. This word, this principle of hope, is a word that God keeps giving my wife, Rachel and I, as we pray about the next season for us, as my curacy comes towards the end, and what it might look like. For us, hope is visible. It needs to look like something. It needs to be tangible for all to see. It's a a safe space for young and old to come and meet with their Heavenly Father and exchange their burdens for hope. A place of belonging, of community, of authenticity, of laughter and growth where people meet together around the dinner table and become transformed as they hear of testimony after testimony of how Jesus has been provider and healer and protector and faithful deliverer. A space for children to learn of their creator and how he is speaking to them in dreams and visions and where anyone can enter and encounter Jesus through prayer, worship, and meet with their loving Heavenly Father. For us, this is what a hope-filled church looks like. In short, to quote that famous saying, it's the local church that is the hope of the world. And so what does this mean for us as a family. Well, I'm excited to let you know today that following a process of exploration and discernment and seeking the Lord over the past six months and following an offer from the parish of All Saints Isleworth and the Bishop of Kensington's office, I've recently said yes to their offer to become the new vicar and priest in charge of All Saints Isleworth this summer, subject to final paperwork and formalities. This not only is an exciting new opportunity and challenge for us as a family, it's also an opportunity for us as St Stephen's because it's in keeping with our resource church calling and with Jez's encouragement, I would like to invite any of you who might feel called to join us, to become part of this adventure, part of the grafting team that I love to build as we join with the existing congregation at All Saints and together help take the church forward as a new church family, bringing new life and revitalization and being a beacon of hope to the people of Isleworth. 
In a moment, I want to show you a short video recorded at All Saints, which shares a bit more of the vision that Rach and I feel God has placed on our hearts for the adventure ahead. But just before that, Jonathan Rust from the Bishops of Kensington's office is going to say a few words. Thanks, Jonathan. Hi, I'm Jonathan Rust and I'm the Director of Mission here in the Kensington area. I wanted to say thank you to St Stephen's Twickenham. Thank you to Jez and to Rachel, particularly to Dave, who's been at the heart of conversations about the idea of leading a, a graft, a team of people out of St Stephen's Twickenham and into All Saints Isleworth. All Saints Isleworth is a lovely church, bang next to the river uh, and uh, got a great, a great deal going for it but needs a bit of revitalization and new energy. And thank you, St. Stephen's, that you have got a heart for the wider church and not just focused inwards, but focused very much outwards. And uh, we're looking forward enormously to seeing what God is gonna be doing through this initiative and the new life that uh, people will see and become a part of in Isleworth. Thank you for being the initiator and starter of this wonderful opportunity. We believe that with this calling, God has given us a vision to be a beacon of hope for the people of Isleworth or All Saints Church, a short 15 minute drive or a 30 minute walk down the Thames from St Stephen's. This is where we feel he has called us with the exciting opportunity of leading a graft, bringing people, time and resources from St Stephen's to join with the existing congregation there is here bringing revitalization and creating a new church family. So what does this look like? Well, it centers around three things. Number one, worship and prayer. First and foremost, we believe that the family of God primarily exists to worship Jesus, to pray and be in communion with him. We want to create a new church family that at the forefront of its DNA and identity treasures the presence of God in the variety of expressions that come with that. This isn't about wiping away what has been, but is instead about honouring what has gone before us and celebrating what God has done, but then bringing fresh vision as two groups of people who love Jesus join together and create a new, vibrant church family. Number two, community. Rather than a church plan, a graft means that there is already an existing church congregation. And we have been invited and given the privilege to join with them here at All Saints Isleworth to create a new church family. Community then is about building that new family around food, celebration, shared life, and ultimately, to be a people who love Jesus and overflow with that new life and hope that he brings. But community is also outward. We're keen to see All Saints as a real hub of the local community here in Isleworth, a place of life and hope, connecting with local businesses, local schools, and people of peace here in the community for the flourishing of all. And number three, families. All Saints already has a number of families coming to the church on a Sunday for various reasons. And we see this as a great missional opportunity to share the good news of Jesus with them, to see lives transformed by hope and love. We also want to create open doors that make All Saints a space that is accessible and available for families and children to come over the threshold and find this as a place of hope. Families, as I'm sure we all know, are made up of all sorts of people, ages, backgrounds and generations. We know that in order to create a new worshipping family here, there needs to be a wide range of people and generations so that it can be a place that fully reflects the family of God, full of love, wisdom, peace, joy, and hope. As I mentioned, 
We have been invited by the Bishop's Office to come and bring leadership, resources, time and people. And that's where you come in. What does being a beacon of hope look like for you? Is God stirring something within you as you've listened to this vision of what this church family could look like? And is he calling you to be a part of this adventure too? I believe that the world is hungry for hope. We believe as a family that God is calling us to All Saints Isleworth to lead a graft and for that church to be a beacon of hope for the people of Isleworth. Perhaps the times that we live in are uncertain in a number of areas and there are likely to be challenges ahead. This is an opportunity that we feel God has placed before us. But like all opportunities, it comes with challenges, also particularly around the building. There is significant work to be done on the building over the next few years, and that will mean some significant fundraising work over the next few years too. It may be that some of you have expertise in those areas of building or fundraising. And as part of what I've shared with you, the spirit may be stirring you either to explore joining the grafting team that will move over to All Saints or to give some of your time and to support the work that will be needed there, even as you continue to be part of St. Stephen's. We believe that part of the proof of the call comes in the provision of those things. We believe God has called us to a mission in the place of Isleworth, to be a beacon of hope there. And all the challenges and obstacles we believe are to be held within that greater mission. The question is, is he calling you. Perhaps he isn't and that is a calling in itself, a calling to stay and build and be part of the new chapter here at St Stephen's. But my wife Rach and I have been praying for people here who God might be stirring to join us on this adventure, praying that you will recognise that stirring and discerning the gifts talents and enthusiasm you might want to bring and come and find out more about our vision for All Saints. So if that's you, if you do sense that stirring, a sense of calling within you, or even if you're not sure and you'd like to explore further, first and foremost, please do drop me an email. And I love to chat further and hear about what God might be saying to you. A few other practical things on top of that to note are, we will be holding two vision afternoons in the spring in St Stephen's on the afternoons of the 26th of February and the 26th of March. It will be worth coming to both of those afternoons. Coming along doesn't commit you to anything at this point. It's a space to explore and find out more as we pray and discern if God might be calling you to. It will be great to pray and to worship together and hear a bit more about the vision. We would love to have some firm commitments after Easter for those who are up for joining us on that grafting team. That will help us to plan together and for us to be sent out from St. Stephen's in June. Also to say that a firm commitment to join the great team is that I suggest a commitment to be part of this new adventure there for a minimum of a year. We obviously hope that those joining the team will stay longer and be in it with us for the long haul. 
but a minimum commitment of a year to help generate momentum and help make tangible the vision we feel God is laying on our hearts to be a beacon of hope for Isleworth as we get going from the summer onwards would be great. So let's come back to that verse from Romans that we started with and that question what does hope look like for you and is it joining us on this great adventure of pulling the eternal victory of God into the present into Isleworth to be a beacon of hope so Romans 15 verse 13 May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Well, thank you so much, Dave, for sharing your heart and your vision for the future with us as you look forward to this exciting opportunity to step up into leadership at All Saints Isleworth. And just to reiterate what Dave was saying, I think this is an opportunity for all of us connected with St. Stephen's to prayerfully consider whether God through his Holy Spirit might be nudging us to play a part in this and to support Dave and his family in some way as he prepares for this move. That might be a nudge to join the grafting team that will go with Dave and form this new chapter in the life of all saints with the existing congregation there. It might be a nudge to, to pray in an informed way for that transition and for uh, the future chapter at all saints. Or it might be to offer your talents and your experience to Dave in some other way, even if you're planning on staying connected here at St. Stephen's, in a way that will support him. You've heard there about some of the needs there'll be for thought about the buildings and planning around fundraising. Maybe you have some skills and experience that could be a support to Dave, even if you're not feeling that nudge to go and relocate to All Saints. So a time for all of us to be prayerfully considering our response as we rise up again as a church to this opportunity to play a part in the wider strengthening of God's church in this area. I'd love to pray a final blessing for us and then we're going to close our service with a song of worship that reminds us all about the importance of building our life on Jesus, his love and generosity towards us that calls out of us a generous response to him. So let's receive this blessing as we draw our service to a close. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you both now and always. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining in with our service today and let's enjoy this final song of worship together. Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you.
song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Do the- 